products. In the previous two videos, we looked at automatic feature engineering from time series data for binary and multi-class classification problems. In this video, we will do the same automatic feature engineering for time series forecasting problems. Okay. Uh, to get the data, we need an additional library called Pandas Data Reader. Uh, if you don't have it already, please install either using pip or conda. Okay. Uh, it's the same modules we are importing. Uh, so extract features for feature extraction and then select features for filtering uh, the most important features. Now we are going to use one more uh, important uh, function, which is this role time series. Okay, I'll explain when we use it. All right. And then, uh, so we are using this pandas data reader uh, to extract uh, some stock market data. So for the sticker Apple, and we are only taking uh, the highest value on that day. Okay, so we have a very classical, simple time series data. We have the date and we have the stock value, uh, highest stock value on that day. Okay, so just plotting it. Uh, nothing special is we have around four years of data uh, this is how it looks like and then uh, we are doing a bit of modification to the uh, data frame so that we have the date which is index here uh, we have explicitly have the date column okay so here uh, we have created the date column uh, from the index and then uh, we also have the symbol so it is often that the time series data we have, uh, it can be from multiple time series, right? I mean, we we might be forecasting not only for this one sticker, but uh, for maybe multiple stickers. So we need to, to in order to differentiate, uh, we have created this uh, 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 column called symbol. Uh, it's uh, uh, Apple. All right. Now, it's a little tricky with translating so we are going to translate this a uh, forecasting problem into regression problem and we are also going to create some automatic feature engineering uh, using this uh, ts fresh library uh, first let me explain uh, using this uh, okay uh, this is the data we have right imagine this is the data we have now in a time series for example let's say we want to uh, forecast for uh, july 16th okay uh, let's say this is all the data we have so in order to forecast for july 16th we can treat this as a univariate forecasting problem and we can use all this data uh, to train a model and then forecast for uh, the next day okay that's one way to do that but here what we want to do is we want to convert this problem as a regression problem when we want to do a regression problem, we need to have some features, right? So what we are going to do is, we are going to use a, an approach called sliding window approach. Okay. Now we need to define uh, a window width. So for example, here, uh, we arbitrarily choose a window size of 10. Uh, the window size is simply a, the number of timestamps. Okay. So let's look at the green one first. Let's say we want to uh, forecast for uh, 30th of June, okay, 30th of June, which is this data point 116.23. To forecast or predict in regression this value, what we do is we take only the previous 10 values. So the data from 16th of June until uh, 29th of June. Is it just 10 points? Uh, are we missing any data? Ah, yeah. So we are missing, uh, I mean, okay. Uh, the the stock value don't change on the weekends. So here we have 20 and 21st. But this is just 10 data points. So we use this 10 data points uh, to predict the value on the 30th of June. And then to predict the value on the 1st of July, we will use only the previous 10 points, not the uh, so we are going to ignore this point, right? So we are going to use only the previous 10 points to predict uh, uh, July 1st data. And similarly, in order to predict the July 2nd data, 
we are going to use the data only from the 18th of June. So only the previous 10 points. I, that's how the sliding window concept works. So we take a window and we slide across the data we have. Okay. Now we want to do some featuring. So one way to uh, do this is we can simply take these 10 values as features, right? So we'll have feature one, feature two, feature three, up to feature 10. So simply uh, the feature values, uh, I mean uh, the stock value as it is uh, in 10 columns. And then we have the target value, uh, which is uh, the 11th day value. We can do that, but we want to do some uh, feature engineering, right? We don't want to take uh, the raw values as it is uh, as features. We want to use these 10 previous day values and we want to engineer some features from it. That's what we are going to do in this uh, uh, in this uh, video. Uh, I hope that's clear. Uh, all right, so let's go back. Uh, so here we were, okay. Uh, now uh, one more concept I forgot. So uh, let's say we have this data. Now we start with the data, right? Now in order to predict the value on the 17th June, we don't have 10 prior values here. You see, we don't have 10 prior values here because the data is starting from the 16th of June. So we cannot injure, I mean, we don't have 10 values so that we can engineer features, right? So for the starting data, what we can do is we can uh, choose a minimum value. Uh, it, it can be same as the window size, but usually what we do is we don't want to ignore all the first 10 values, right? I mean, up to this point, for example, up to this point, uh, we don't have 10 prior values. So we have to, uh, ignore training the model on these values as targets, right? We can use the targets only from this point. So what we can do is we can choose a smaller window size at the beginning of the data. Okay. Keep that in mind. So let's go back. So this is one of the most important function, uh, roll time series. Okay. So what it does is it takes the data in this format. Okay, now the column ID is symbol. So as I mentioned, we might have multiple series. So in order to distinguish, we have created this convenient column symbols. And obviously we want to make sure the data is sorted. Uh, we are defining two values here. So this is the window size, uh, which is 20. So what it means is we are going to use the previous 20 values as raw data to predict the 21st value, okay? Now, because we don't have 20 values, uh, sufficient data at the beginning of the time series, instead of using the window size as 20, we are saying, hey, if there are previously five values, uh, that's enough. Just use those five values as the raw data uh, to create the features. Okay. So at this point, we are only preparing the data in the raw format. Okay. Raw format meaning we'll have uh, the previous 20 days of data as 20 columns and the corresponding target value uh, in 21st column. Okay. That's how uh, this function does. So the output from this function, uh, DF role, uh, this is how it looks like. Now let's look at the tail first. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, we have uh, data insufficiency at the very beginning, right? So let's look at the tail value. So here I'm uh, printing the first, uh, the last 50 values. Now let's take 27th, okay? Now let me highlight this portion, 27th. Okay, so if you look at this one, here we have highlighted 20 rows. So what it means is in order to predict this 20, the value on the 27th, we are making use of the previous 20 values, uh, which we defined as our window. So as you can see here, this is the previous data, right? This is previous 20 data. So we have created an ID column for every 20, uh, which is unique for every 20 rows. Okay. 
Now, the reason we are doing that is because the TF Fresh library, when creating or engineering the features automatically, uh, it expects this three column data, right? Uh, the raw data value and the date and finally the ID. So for each unique ID, it's going to use all the values for that unique ID uh, to engineer uh, the features, the thousand, close to thousand features. So what it does is, uh, again coming to this date, so it's going to use uh, these 20 days of data as a time series to engineer 100 features. Uh, sorry, uh, the, 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 the close to 1000 features because this is one unique uh, ID. Okay. And it does the same for every uh, unique ID. Okay. Now coming to the head of the data. Now, if you look at uh, this ID, yeah. So as you can see here, we have only six rows with this uh, uh, ID instead of a 21. The reason is in order to predict this value, we do not have prior 20 values. Okay. But when we are creating this data frame, we said, Hey, it is sufficient uh, to have five values. So that's why uh, it built the uh, data frame uh, in a way so that for the first target value, we have at least five previous days of data. Okay. And then it will increase to six. And for example, okay, here it will increase to seven previous date data. Uh, this is 11th, 11th. Okay. And then it will increase to eight. And finally it will, uh, until it reaches 20 from that point onwards, uh, for each unique ID, we will have 20 days of previous data. Okay. So all we did is we prepared the data in a format, uh, which so that the TS fresh library can take it as an input and build features. Okay. Now, after this, um, okay. After this, uh, we will uh, do the feature engineering, the automatic feature engineering part. So here we are simply uh, inputting our DF role data frame. Uh, we are just dropping this symbol uh, because ID is the one which is uh, differentiating each time series uh, with the window width of 20. And then again, we want to sort by column and uh, the raw column from which we want to create the features is this high. Okay. So this is going to create uh, uh, close to a thousand features. So it, 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 it created uh, 783 features. Now uh, the developers of the library, they keep adding new features. Now, so for different versions of this library, create different number of features. So the latest version, it might create some uh, additional features, right? So the value might be more than 783. Okay. All right. Uh, so that's what we are doing. Uh, there are some nuances to it uh, because um, again, because we are using the sliding window approach and we are saying uh, we need to have at least five prior values, the original data frame, uh, we have extracted the data for 256 days, right? This is the original data frame, but the rolled data frame has only uh, one, two, five, one. The reason we have less than five records is because here we define we wanted minimum five days prior data uh, to prepare the data uh, in this format using sliding window. Okay, so that's one nuance. And the other one, I'll explain. So as you can see here, uh, for each uh, ID, uh, we are counting how many times each ID appeared. Okay, uh, the minimum times and the maximum times. So the maximum times is 21. Uh, that's because we are using previous 20 days data plus uh, the forecasted one which will have the same uh, ID. So we have 21 and this one 5 plus 1, 6 uh, because the minimum previous days is 5. Okay. All right. So we have extracted the features. And then, um, right. So let's look at the features, right? So here uh, we are extracting the features. Uh, we have 793 features. 
uh, as you know uh, to the original column which is called high in our uh, uh, input data frame df role it has uh, created number of features and it will uh, uh, post fix uh, what the feature is about right so for example this feature uh, it says whether the variance is larger than standard deviation or not and this feature says if the maximum value in those during 20 days uh, has a duplicate or not uh, same thing with the minimum right uh, it's uh, high has duplicate high has a duplicate and then we have the sum of the values uh, uh, the means etc uh, uh, etc et okay all right so again uh, just looking at the features so the variance larger than standard deviation so some based on the signal processing uh, the, the non-linear dynamics etc uh, etc et all right um because our feature data frame it has reduced the size by five uh, because of that minimum prior days condition we need to do a little bit of modification on the target variable so that we can map the features with the corresponding target uh, consistently okay uh, yeah so that's what we are doing here uh, so we are shifting uh, y by one uh, so that we are forecasting the data until that point uh, to uh, predict uh, the next value and uh, finally uh, we need to uh, because this is a time series uh, problem uh, we cannot do the random train test split uh, as we do for a, a normal machine learning classical machine learning models right uh, like uh, uh, regression here we need to keep the temporal uh, consistency so what we are going to do is we are going to use the data from the starting until a point for training and from that point uh, till the end of the data for testing or validation okay so that's what we are doing here right so we are using the data until 2018 end of 2018 now this is interesting i i found out uh, while working through this notebook uh, you see here we have the timestamp as uh, index right now we can use this format uh, to filter so we just specify the year as a string and it automatically parse this index uh, to filter the data uh, which is quite convenient i uh, i would say yeah so that's what we are doing here uh, both for uh, train and test and then uh, we can do the feature selection as well as we saw before uh, we need to supply all the features which are some 700 plus here and then we need to supply the target variable right so that will give us uh, that will uh, evaluate each feature against the target uh, using the feature selection some hypothesis test testing etc method uh, and it will return only the useful features uh, let me do one thing insert uh, cell below uh, um, okay let me do this yeah so from those 700 features it has returned just uh, 214 uh, features which are useful and then we can do the uh, regular thing uh, we can uh, uh, instantiate uh, a regression model and then we can we have uh, the train data and the target data now these features might not be good enough to build a great uh, uh, regression model we might need to do uh, the hyperparameter tunings etc etc but uh, that's how we can try and convert a time series forecasting problem into a regression problem and uh, the two main concepts uh, here are we are using uh, this sliding window concept where we choose a fixed uh, window width so we forecast uh, a, a, the value on a date using the previous fixed number of days values right so we have chosen 20 so that's one thing and then using those 20 values we are engineering these 700 800 features okay so that's the two-step process uh, we have followed uh, the code is on the github uh, i'll link it uh, in the description uh, uh, it's a little uh, confusing uh, compared to straightforward uh, these machine learning classification or regression models uh, so have a look at the notebook and if you have any questions uh, you can ask me in the comment section uh, thank you very much.